So you got lucky. You got to take it to the masters this year. Congratulations. You're in for the time of your life. It is the best sporting event in the world hands down. But there's some things you should know if you want to make the most out of your time at Augusta National. Today, I'm going to talk about 10 things you got to know before you go to the Masters. This is going to help make sure you don't get in any trouble. It's going to help make sure that you get the most out of your time there and that you have the best time possible. So if you're ready to find out all the fun stuff that's going to make your day super special, or you just want to hear about all the cool things that someone else is going to get to do when they go to the Masters while you watch it on TV, keep watching. Today's video is for you. Two things real quick. There's going to be less B-roll in this video than there are normally in our videos because, well, I just don't want to use any coverage or any photos of Augusta that might get me in trouble. That is one organization that I would like to remain on friendly terms with because, well, obvious reasons. Second, if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Sean Ogle. I'm the founder of this thing here, Breaking 80, where we talk about cool golf courses, golf travel, golf products. So if you got some value out of this video, you're probably going to get value out of future videos. So maybe consider hitting the subscribe button. That would be super helpful for me. But now let's help you with some tips for how to make the most out of your time at the Masters. All right. First thing you need to know is you need to know the rules. Like, did you know that you can't take your phone into the Masters or a laptop or an iPad or any sort of device that can transmit information? So leave it in the car. There is a page on the Masters website that details all the rules you need to know. Things like you can't ask for autographs or that there's no signs or that you can't bring a backpack. You should make sure you fully understand the rules so that you don't show up and then get turned away at the door or worse, somehow sneak something in and then get caught and then kicked out for life because that would kind of suck. And while one of the rules is that during tournament days, there are no cameras, if you go during a practice round, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, you can bring a dedicated camera into the grounds. So not a cell phone that has a camera in it, but it has to be a dedicated camera. So if you're going to a practice round, definitely make sure you bring your camera because you're going to get photos that you may just not get another time ever again. So take advantage of that opportunity. Hey, real quick, I also have a written master's guide and I will link to that below. It has even more information, including a straight like hour by hour guide of where I would go and what I would do and what the best vantage points are. So if you're looking for a little bit more help planning your master's day, then I would go check that out. I think you're going to find it super helpful. Second thing you should plan to do is park at Augusta National. If you were going to a Super Bowl or even if you're going to like a college football game, there's a good chance you might not have a parking pass or it would be super expensive to do it. So you plan to park far away and walk or take a shuttle. Well, the cool thing about the Masters is that Augusta National has plenty of parking. So you can park on the grounds for free. It's actually super easy. And traffic, in my experience, in the three times that I have gone, it this is not nearly as bad as you expect it to be. And that goes for the Masters as a whole. You would expect it to be super crowded. And while there's definitely a lot of patrons at times, all the lines move quickly. Nothing ever feels unorganized. This is the most well-oiled machine in all of golf. And you're going to experience that from the second you get into the parking lot to the time you get into the gates throughout the entire day to the second you leave. It's very impressive. Third thing you should do is have a rough plan for the day. It can be easy to get overwhelmed or not really know where to go, or you just kind of set up shop and you just stay in one place the whole time. Well, if you've only got one day at the Masters and if you're not sure you're going to be coming back, you're going to want to kind of see all of it. And throughout the rest of this video, I'm going to talk about all the things you should do and the order you should do them in, but you should at least have a general idea of what you want to see, what's important to you, where you're going to go at what time. And by having a little bit of a plan, it's going to allow you to make the most of your experience. Which brings us to number four, because this is one that's going to allow you to really make the most of your experience, is make sure you bring an armless foldable chair. So there are specific dimensions for this. That's going to be on the Masters website that I will link to below. But this is one of the coolest things in all of sports. So you're allowed to bring one armless folding chair. You want to get in as early as you can, and you can go take this folding chair, and you can put it anywhere on the course, or at least anywhere that patrons are allowed. Well, if you're lucky enough to get your tickets from the tournament itself and not an obscenely expensive reseller, then this is going to be the cheapest, best seat you will get at a world-class sporting event. You can take that chair, you can put it anywhere. So first thing when you walk in, you take that chair and you go find the spot that you wanna be later in the afternoon. So some places to consider the 18th green. If it's a Saturday or Sunday and you're one of the first people in, you can go put that chair by the 18th green and you can have an excellent spot to watch everything happen as the tournament is concluding. It's pretty cool. 
For me personally, I would probably go 16th green either along the water or back behind the green. Depending on where you are, you're going to be able to see people come into 15, you'll be able to see people teeing off on 6, and you're going to be able to watch the iconic 16th hole, which no matter what day you're doing it, that's just an awesome spot to spend an afternoon. The second green is also an awesome spot because you can watch the approaches onto two green and you can watch them tee off on three. And seven green is also not a bad spot to put your chair because it's slightly elevated and it's close to two and three so you can see some of the action happening there as well as everything happening on seven. So you might be thinking, okay, yeah, I, I buy my chair, I put it down at eight in the morning, by two, it's either going to be stolen or someone's going to be sitting in it. No. The Masters is this special place where nobody does that. There might be someone sitting in it, but they will immediately get up if you tell them it is your chair and no one is stealing your chair. It will be there when you return. So it's pretty cool. By doing that first, by taking that chair, putting it where you want to be, it's going to ensure you're going to have an awesome spot to watch the action in the afternoon. Uh, just be aware that there's also thousands of other people that have this same idea, so be prepared for that. But don't run, because there's no running at Augusta National. <laughs> the fifth thing you should do when you visit the Masters is kind of obvious, and that is walk the course. So for me, more than watching the players, more than anything else, like the best Masters experience, and one of the best golf experiences I've had was the first time I showed up and I walked the course. I got a cup of coffee, I got a breakfast sandwich, I walked the back nine early. I did that first, right after I put my chair down. There's hardly anyone back there. There was no players in the morning. So being able to go back with very few people and walk the back nine Augusta National, I mean, that's one of the coolest experiences in golf. So even though you're going to be excited for the tournament, you're going to be excited to watch everything, take the time to have a leisurely stroll and go enjoy the course because it may be the only time you ever get to see it. Hey, sorry to interrupt real quick. Uh, do you have any extra Masters tickets? Maybe one extra one for your favorite golf YouTuber? Um, yeah, Sean at Breaking80.com. Shoot me an email. Would love, would love to talk. Would love to go back because, well, obvious reasons. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm joking. I mean, only kind of, unless you actually have a ticket that you want to give me. Okay, back to the video. Speaking of coffee and the breakfast sandwich, the sixth thing you should do is get concessions. Get all of the concessions. How much do you think a beer costs at the Super Bowl? Probably like 20 bucks. I don't know, a lot of money. You know how much a beer costs in 2023 at Augusta National? $5. Sandwiches? $3. Soda? Less than that. I'm gonna butcher the exact numbers, but I once saw something that you could buy the entire menu at the Masters for like 40 bucks or something like that. So you should probably just plan to do that. The concessions are so unbelievably cheap, and even better than that, they are delicious. And make sure you get the pimento cheese sandwich. It's just a staple. You gotta do it. So number seven, this is a little known fact, you can get a photo at the course. So if you are going to a tournament day, you can't have a camera, kind of a bummer, there's nothing to remember it by, but there is. You can go around to the front of the clubhouse, you can go to what's called the Founder Circle, and you can go there and get an iconic photo in front of the flowers, in front of the clubhouse, and they will send it to you at the end of the day. So just being able to get a photo of yourself at Augusta and at the Masters is cool, but getting like the most iconic view right at the end of Magnolia Lane with the clubhouse, the flowers, I mean, it doesn't get much cooler than that, and you can do it for free. When I've done it, I usually go mid-afternoon. I go at like 2.30 or 3. I've never had to wait more than 10 minutes. So really, there's no reason not to do this. It's a free souvenir that you're going to get that's going to be a wonderful reminder of your day at the tournament. Eighth, make sure you go to the gift shop. The gift shop there is absolutely stacked with so much good stuff and it's honestly really affordable. Chances are polos, hats, sweatshirts, all of these things are probably going to be less expensive than what a similar polo would cost at your own club. So there's no reason not to go insane and just buy out the whole thing, which people do. So make sure you get enough stuff for yourself, make sure you got stuff for your friends, and don't be afraid of crowds and the lines and all the people, because even if it seems long, it's going to go very quickly, as does every single line at the Masters. It's pretty insane, actually. And personally, if it were me, I would wait till the end of the day to do this. It will probably be more crowded at that time, but I also don't want to carry around my bags of souvenirs with me throughout the whole day. So by doing it on the way out, it just kind of saves you the hassle. Number nine is to make sure you spend some time up near the clubhouse and some of the other places you might not think to consider. So up near the clubhouse, there's a lot of stuff happening. You're going to see a lot of members wearing their green jackets. There's a good chance you're going to see some celebrities. You're probably going to see some players giving interviews. Going out to the practice range and the practice greens and watching how the players practice is really cool. It's also one of the most 
unbelievable ranges you will see. I still remember one of the last times I was there, I was watching Phil on the practice screen and he was just hitting flop shot after flop shot. I was like, how is he doing this? Watching that in person is just a totally different experience than what you see on TV. If you happen to go on Wednesday, also be sure to go to the par three course and watch the par three tournament. That's one area that often gets overlooked and not as many people get to see it. So being able to have the kind of fun, casual, laid back vibe of the par three tournament and seeing another part of Augusta National is a really cool experience. And finally, the last thing you need to know before you go to the Masters is to have fun. You're at the most unbelievable sporting event in the world. Everything about it is antithetical to what you would expect from a typical big sporting event. Once you're in the gates, everything is affordable. You can get unbelievable seats. For the most part, everybody is calm and polite and respectful. And honestly, the whole experience is just so special. And not only is it unlike any other sporting event in the world, it's unlike any other golf tournament in the world. If you've been to a golf tournament, you're like, yeah, it's not my thing. You've been to the waste management, you're like, yeah, it's a little too. The Masters is nothing like that. The Masters is truly a special thing. So enjoy every second of it and just hope that you can get tickets again next year because I guarantee you're going to want to go back. So there you go. Those are all the things I would do if I were visiting the Masters for the first time or frankly the fifth time. If I were to go back this year, I would still pretty much do all of those same things. With that, my name is Sean Ogle. I'm the founder of this thing here at Breaking 80, where we talk about cool golf courses and cool golf products. If you got some value out of this, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me out a lot and I hope to see you on the next video. Peace.